Hello you beautiful lot and welcome to the next video in the Long Walk Home series. It's a bit noisy right now because this trail does start at the edge of the road but this is trail number four and it is the John Muir Way. 137 miles starting in the town of Helensborough and finishing at Dunbar. Let's go! And for those of you that didn't know, Helensborough, which is the star, is the birthplace of the TV. So your girl's got a little bit of company on this hike. Hey. <laughs> this is Jules, also known as Overstepping over on Instagram. This girl is currently on a challenge to hike and camp in every MBA bothy in the whole of the UK. So she's done over 3,000 miles now. She's got about 23 left, so do follow her because she's a mad woman. Um, she gets a little bit camera shy though, so... <laughs> So I'm not going to shove the camera in her face for the whole of this trip, but I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that one of the evenings she'll talk us through her kit because I know you guys like a cheeky little pervert, some of our kit, and I think you'd do that, wouldn't you, Jules? Absolutely. Yeah, everyone loves a good kit perv. You might have noticed, actually, girl's got a bit of a change in outfit. Look at this. Got me some uh, new leggings. Basically, Mine had ripped in the crutch on day four on the John O'Groats Trail on barbed wire. I'd sewn them up about three times and they just, they just kept ripping through. So um, yeah, gone for these ones now, which is quite nice. And I've also upgraded, well, not upgraded, but I've now got my Frog Togs pink coat back um, because the OM, as good as it is, just the way Scottish rain works, I think I need to double waterproof. So I've now got two ultralight waterproof coats. Um, and I'm just gonna rock it and see how that goes. <laughs> anyway, let's turn you around, get back on the trail. One of the first historical sites you'll come across on the John Muir Way is the Ballot Castle. Now, Ballot Castle was a functioning castle until around 1390, I think. And this is when it was decided that actually it wasn't going to be that safe for oncoming attacks. And so the residents there and in the area just upped and abandoned it. It was reclaimed at a later date. It got turned into a visitor center here. Um, but actually the visitor center has now moved. So it is abandoned once more. So we've just filtered water out from down there. And it's, I know you guys keep telling me this is just peat, but it's been filtered and it stinks, mate. So um, there's no farm animals around though, unlike some of the other places that I've been refilling from. So yeah, maybe it is just stinky peaty bog. Right, we've decided after doing the sniff test that this water definitely smells a lot better. So even though the water that we got previously was filtered, actually, oh, it's just, why risk it? Why risk it? So we're going for some swampy, more gritty, but less stinky water. <laughs> so this is the comparison of the water colour after going through filters. So this one. It's definitely going in it, Jules. Yeah. Yep. Guys, we've made our way to our own little island. This is this is so cute. There's like a tiny strip that we could walk across, and it is beautiful. Oh my gosh! I'll get the tents pitched up, and then. When Jules and I left Helensborough, we still had some leftover veg, so we carried these out to make a beautiful noodle soup, adding mushroom, fake chicken, courgette, and a big handful of baby corn. 
and to make it soupy, two of these Asian chicken ramen noodle soup packets. Accidentally vegan. Look at that drippy, drippy soupy juice. Oh. oh my gosh, probably not the best way to describe it. <laughs> Looks lush. I mean, there is pieces of grass in it, but extra flavour, guys, extra flavour. Good morning, you beautiful lot. It is day two of the John Muir Way, and I think day 19 of the long walk home. I'm showering inside my tent for the minute because it has started to rain and spit a little bit, and so all my stuff is going to be going in bin bags today to make sure it is super waterproof for another wild camp tonight. Um, quite luckily, we are on the outskirts of a storm. So there is a storm at the moment battering the UK. And for some reason, touch wood, we're more like in the eye of it. So we've been really lucky. Spoke too soon about us avoiding the storm, didn't I, Jolt? <laughs> We've, we've chilled in here for like half an hour. We've, we've got to get going. Mate, it is like... It is... Yeah. <laughs> Look at this though. So basically, the weather's brutal. We took a wrong turn. Found a cafe bus. Got myself a coffee. Got myself some vegan pistachio carrot cake. Look at that. Come on, focus. How beautiful is that? And look at the state of the outside, mate. The storm is coming in. We're back on the West Island Way, aren't we, Jules? I that we are. Hey, I thought I recognised this bit. And the rain stopped a little bit. So, I mean, I'm really glad I double waterproof because it was chucking it down. But yeah, if you decide to do the John Muir Way, a good section of it, probably about six, seven miles, double check that because I'm definitely not sure right. goes along the West Highland Way so um, yeah a lot of people doing the joggle actually don't do the whole West Highland Way and they don't do the whole John Muir Trail and they skip down West Highland Way and go along John Muir so if you're watching these videos because you're thinking about doing the joggle this could be an option for you So much wild garlic along this trail, it smells beautiful. It's a bench in the shape of a train! <laughs> Alrighty, it is history time. This is the start of the walk around Bar Hill. More than 1800 years ago, this was an element in a 3,100 mile border throughout Europe and the Middle East as well as North Africa. So um, a lot of this is or was created um, as a defense. And now we are on Croy Hill. And this little bit here overlooking town below they reckon might have been one of the many signal stations um, so beacons would be lit to sort of send a message on and this is the top of the Antonine wall which was built as part of the defense mechanisms by the Romans and it was mainly made of sticks and rubble and dirt but strong enough that it's still a land formation today And this beautiful little area is where we've pitched tonight. And I think we might even get a sunset. <gasps> okay, so this is it. All pitched up. The tent has dried out from this morning, which is absolutely amazing. I haven't set up my bed or anything yet tonight. I've started just setting up my bed before I go to sleep because it is now coming into tick season in Scotland and um, I like to just do one final check before I get into bed. 
Some might say that's me being hyper paranoid, but to be honest, it's what makes me feel comfortable. And there are now some ticks that are carrying this encephalitis virus at the moment. Um, that's sort of making its way throughout the UK. When I was pitched on the West Highland Way, a guy did tell me that they had just had their first official case linked back there. No one really knows how serious this encephalitis is at this moment in time, but if you know anything about Japanese encephalitis, hopefully it's nothing that bad. But I just don't think there's anything being better, safer than sorry, really. And I'm very much a prevent rather than cure. So I'm someone that will talk their feet, Vaseline their feet, whack tea tree between their toes so that things don't get infected rather than just wait for, I don't know, cuts and sores to get infected and then just go, oh, okay, well, I'll take some antibiotics or take some medicine or have to use those topical creams. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong if someone wants to take that response. But for me personally, I'm very much, I'd rather triple check everything and make sure a tick doesn't bite me then have to remove it and deal with the paranoia of what if. It's been a really lovely day too. The terrain's been again a struggle for my feet, a struggle for um, Jules's glutes but we met someone else who's doing the ledge jog and he said he's done 850 miles, he's come northbound from Land's End, said he hasn't had a problem until the past two days. So um, yeah we, we will see what the terrain's like because tomorrow is looking Pretty brutal, man. Pretty brutal for the feet. But after that, we're on coast. And both Jules and I love some coast walking. So that'll be nice. Good morning, you beautiful lot. It is day three of the John and Muir Trail. And day 20, I think of the long walk home. I've lost track of the days, guys. I'm not gonna lie, I have no clue what it is. I think it's Wednesday or it could be Thursday. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> it's quite nice though when you don't know the days. We are currently walking to Croy Hill, which has a very, very cool little monument at the top of it because it has a Roman head made out of metal. So it's this kind of cool sculpture that we're doing a mini, mini, mini detour to see because it goes very close by it. So um, yeah, we're quite excited for that because Jules loves her history and no, I, I love do. telling you about history. So, um, and what a fitting place to have a giant Roman head than an old Roman fort wall structure. So uh, Jules is in her element really. She loves this stuff. Oh, I love you? it. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is, the giant Roman head. This is awesome. This looks so cool. Look at that. Love it. Right, what's the official name for the mohawk that they put on the top of these? Because I'm blatantly going to be offending people by calling it a mohawk. But it looks freaking awesome. And it is another beautiful canal path walk. So we're opening our feet hold up on the tarmac, haven't we, Jules? <laughs> God, we got this. We got this. That's got a boat in it, mate. That's actually got a canal boat. Up here is a canal, down there is a canal. There used to be 11 canals to switch back canal boats all the way up here, and they've replaced it with this absolutely mad machine right now. I'm gonna turn you around and zoom in because I'm in awe, mates. Look at that. I feel like I need to correct myself here. I meant 11 locks, not 11 canals, but yeah, look. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? How they built these canalways blows my mind. This is a water bridge on top of a river. Amazing. Just amazing. I'm a broken woman, mate. I'm a broken woman. There's no fucking benches for miles. So I'm on the edge of a cycle path with my feet raised. Oh God, it's fucking tarmac. I'm literally lying on the floor with my feet in the air like a right fucking hobbit. Oh, I had them raised on my bag and then this cyclist stopped thinking that I passed out. So um, I've decided to make it more obvious that I'm just trying to uh, get 
some of the swelling down, but I think this is 18 miles of tarmac so far today. So I'm doing better than I was at the start, you know, day seven and eight when I had 16 miles of tarmac and I had a meltdown. Um, I'm doing better. <laughs> Jules is already at the campsite, mate. <laughs> going to be another two and a half hours before we get there. Oh. She said that they do backpacker pictures, but it's long grass, so we will see what the tick situation's like. I'm not going to, um, that's why I'm not rushing really. I thought, well, I'd lie here and raise my legs up um, because I don't want to lie in a tick ridden grass. And one good thing about tarmac is there ain't no ticks on tarmac. For fuck's sake. It's a joke, isn't it? Beautiful. Two miles to go, and this is the path. Oh, just what your girl needed. Hey, we're in a campsite, mate. We're actually at the back of a campsite because they've tucked us backpackers in. So me and Jules have got our two little tents squeezed in behind the caravans. But basically, it was just the easiest option. We didn't know what signal was going to be like. Jules is way quicker on tarmac. I suck so we thought instead of pitching in the woods which we thought would be a really good place that's where we had kind of laid out um it'd be safer to meet in somewhere that we knew so Jules has been here she's already showered and had a nap I'm gonna have a shower in a minute really looking forward to washing really looking forward to soaking my feet to be honest just getting some hot water on it but although it looks mean behind us in front our view we've got another banging sunset the rest of the uk i feel bad saying this there's like a storm going on and we've just been like running away from the storm chasing the sun so fingers crossed we continue to be able to do so but yeah looking forward to just having a nice night's sleep with warm <laughs> clean bodies um and then hopefully tomorrow isn't too much tarmac Good morning you beautiful lot. It is day 21 of the long walk home and day 4 of the John Muir Trail. My hair's done up in my t-shirt because I lost my towel but there was a shower here so your girl is looking and feeling fresh. What's not looking and feeling fresh this morning is the bathtub of my tent. Um, we didn't have any rain last night. The ground is really dewy. It was quite humid. The bathtub was just soaked. I've had to dry down my thermo rest twice with a towel and even when I've been sat on my butt pad, water's coming up. This is a 550 quid tent, guys. 550 quid tent that's supposed to be three seasons. I've had to take her down a night hike to a bothy in about 35 mile per hour with the winds. And now I'm just, I mean, it's not even rain, so I can't even describe the weather here. I'd say it was like a one season summer day um, and the bathtub. Look, I've mopped her and she's wet again. I just don't, I don't get it, she's soaked. Um, and I dried her out before I even got in her yesterday as well. So it's not like it's drip from anything. Look at the wet. I think the ground sheet's already failed on this. I'm literally drying my firm rest to pack it. And this is my food bag. You can even see puddles of it. Just at the back here. Look. I didn't record much for the next 16 miles, frustrated about my already failing tent and the continuous hard surfaces underfoot. The views were stunning of coastal paths and castles, the famous one being Blackness. The smell of wild garlic filled the air and the sea breeze lightened my soul. I met jewels in Bowness for a beautiful meal and some cocktails which numbed our pain as we looked at the view over the fourth bridge. We headed on, hobbling, singing songs and chants to try and get our way through this terrain and decided to skip off onto the beach. We've decided to try and leave the ground behind, head down to the beach for a little walk along. Tight. Tide is coming in, isn't it? So we're risking it. What's it looking like, Jules? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, we can see Edinburgh. We can see Edinburgh. It's a no, isn't it, Jules? No. <laughs> Tide's coming in too quick and 
there ain't actually that much uh, sand there anyway. So we're probably in 200, 200 meters before we're back up a slope again, but it's beautiful. Alrighty, so I've got my coats down. Yes, they say coats as plural because after a certain while in Scotland, the rain just soaks through your waterproof, so I've got two. Um, just to protect the thermrest below, but also now to stop the wetness that you can already see that's coming in from soaking my sleeping bag and my mat tonight. So I know you guys love a cheeky bit of a kit perv. <laughs> So Jules is going to tell us, well, I'm going to ask Jules a couple questions, then she can just answer them. So Jules, what is your tent, please? My tent is the Big Agnes Copper Spur UL1. Love it. And it's quite spacious for a UL1. It is, but bear in mind, I am quite a small girl. And then what sleeping bag do you have? The sleeping bag is the Sierra Designs Cloud 820. So it's good for side sleepers. It has no zip. Just this blanket but you pull around yourself and a foot box that kicks open. Love it. Um, so it's rated down to zero. Um, so throughout winter, I've been using a romper blanket as well on the inside in lieu of a liner. Love so it. I, I'm really tempted to get a blanket instead of a liner, aren't it's, I really? It's really worked for me. That is just the good old standard Thermarest, Thermarest X-Therm, I believe. Love it. <laughs> I've had awesome. it for two years and I can't quite remember which one it is. <laughs> 5.2 R rating. Thermrest rest all the way. E Good morning, you beautiful lot. It is day 22 of the long walk home. I'm officially now walking into week four of this epic journey. Um, and it is day five of the John Muir Trail. Jules and I have had a little look at the map this morning and we've made the executive decision to detour a little bit off trail. Um, so for those of you who have been watching to see the exact John Muir way, um, the section through Edinburgh just follows the canal continuously, which is beautiful, but both of us have done a lot of canal walks right now. And there's a really nice woodland at the start of Edinburgh that we wanna go through. And then we also wanna go up King Arthur's seat, which is this really big viewpoint in Edinburgh. And the John Muir trail doesn't go up there it just passes around it so the new route that we've plotted actually goes via an outdoor store as well because i need gas i need insoles for my shoes um, i might even try and pick up a new pair of trail runners it's pretty much 20 odd miles anyway exactly the same consistently parallel to the canal um, but takes in some of the sights and scenes that we love okay so it has just gone half eight and me and jules have been walking for just over an hour and she's in pain, man. She's in pain from all the tarmac. And she's actually pulled off. Now, Jules is freaking hardcore. Like, she is on mile 3000 and something of her big bothy walk, okay? Like, and she has been doing this in Wales in winter as well. Like, she is a nutter. She's done the Cape Wrath twice. She is a hardcore lass. And it was this trail that has defeated her because it is just serious tarmac. And it's triggered an injury that she had over a year ago that she recovered from and didn't even think was an issue and so her knee is in agony which has caused her hip to compensate and mate she's just she's tapped out she's had to tap out for the day so this is the first bit of detour i'm going to do rather than walking along the road for a mile um i'm going into this nature reserve look at this The new route then went into Edinburgh Central, where I got beautiful views of the famous Edinburgh Castle and looked at various monuments and ruins throughout the city. I also took another detour up Jacob's Ladder, where I had a view across the city of Edinburgh and across to Arthur's Seat. And here it is, the final detour of the day. Going up, can we get her in? Up to there. 
that's Arthur's seat. So I've been walking for about 15, 20 minutes because I kept taking the wrong path from the Scottish Houses of Parliament. And there are loads of different paths that you can take up to the top. Some of them are steeper gradients, some of them are more chilled. So it's really up to you which one you're going to choose. It's really pretty and it makes a nice change from the flat. Oh, look at it. Look at that. That's pretty, isn't it? You've got to admit, that is something special. So here we go. I'll see you at the top for a little sneaky peek at the view. And here it is, the top of Arthur's seat. And right behind me, with all the people, is a trick. And I'm shamelessly chatting into a selfie stick right now with people watching me. So it's going to be even more awkward when I do what well, you know what i got to do. Because we're going to give her a boot. <laughs> it's going to be bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you're after solitude, this is not the route to take. However, it made me really happy to see so many people out here enjoying the outdoors. I think over the past few crazy years, more and more people have realised the importance of going outside and enjoying the outdoors for what it is. And it made me really happy to see so many different people here. One of the positives of walking through Edinburgh, they were giving away sample strongbows. So I'm drinking it. To this view and here we go back on the john muir way <laughs> with tarmac <laughs> look at it look at it look at it look at it oh my gosh the next section of the path is right by the beach and the tide's out and I can walk along it and I'm so happy and my feet are happy and there's only three miles left now until the campsite that Jules has booked and pitched on for the night and she has paid for a pitch so that I can be next to her and it's just turned out good. Good morning, it is day six of the John Muir Way and day 23 of the long walk home. Basically, I stopped recording yesterday. Um, I think it was around 8.30 because I was just in so much pain. Anyone who's had plantar fasciitis will understand how painful that is. For anyone who hasn't, I, I have no idea how to explain it other than, you know when you have that dull toothache that's just consistent? That's what my feet feel like all the time. And then when you eat something cold and you get that sharp like pain, I get that in the tendons. And so I feel like the tendons snap, like that sharp pain, like, and, and it's on both feet now. And you know then sometimes when you have that toothache areas, other areas of your mouth start to compensate. Well, my heels have started to do that. So my heels and my Achilles tendons are now, like my ankles in the evenings are so swollen. You can't differentiate my ankles from my calves. It's just, it's a bit of a nightmare. So anyway, we've decided because checkout at this campsite is 12 that we're probably going to leave sometime between 11 and 12 today and have today as our half day um, because even though it's coast path, it looks tarmac again. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the plan. And then tomorrow we will probably finish in the later evening, hopefully around seven o'clock if we get up early enough. And that's the plan really. And then I'm gonna have a couple zeros, I think, to rest my feet. I'm very aware that I've still got over a thousand miles left to walk. And I really thought my feet were almost there. After the West Highland Way, they were loving it. They were just having little niggles, whereas this one's been absolute agony, <laughs> absolute agony for me. Um, and I'm not sure, not sure what to do. So we've just met this lovely guy. What was your name? Stephen. Stephen, who's just explained that this was once the original harbour. And then all the boats would get pulled up on here. And then a new one got made to the left of us. And now the final one that people use is to the right, which we're walking towards now.
So we've just stumbled across this place, the picnic box. I've got myself a soy latte with vanilla syrup, vegan coffee, vegan biscuits, vegan cake, vegan ice cream, and vegan cups. <laughs> Yay! Love this bloke. And if you're not a vegan, you can get one of these as well. But yeah, look at this. So the next mile or so goes along this road. However, we could walk parallel for half a mile and then link up to the road, going through this beautiful nature reserve. All the work nice today, we're doing it. Oh my gosh, guys, we have lucked out. Look at this for a view. We decided to mission it on, even though today was going to be a shorty. I think we've done about 14 and a half miles because we saw a beautiful, beautiful area of coastland. And <laughs> this is going to be our view tonight. And here it is, the little camp spot for tonight. The views in front of me are absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to show you them. Um, I will pop everything inside in just a sec, but I've been recording a little Nemo tent review um, in the hope that I do get to send this one back. And therefore I've got some footage to post up about my thoughts and opinions of this tent. But yeah, this is it for tonight. It is another banging wild camp spot. We have lucked out so freaking much and tonight's food is this the vegan mushroom risotto by expedition foods i'm excited for this um, i've had a couple of the expedition food meals before and i really like them um i really tried to support the fell store so these were gifted to me by expedition foods but whenever i get stuff i get it from hannah over at the fell store because I just, I really love that company. Um, she's just absolutely amazing at kind of customer feedback. She really does her best to get in a load of different food for vegan, gluten-free, veggie, halal, um, and really thinks about people's nutritional needs as well. And yeah, I think it's really good to support local small businesses. So um, yeah, shout out the Fell Store, even though they weren't the ones that gifted this to me, um, you can get Expedition Foods from them or going through the Expedition Foods website yourself. But yeah excited to dig into this vegan mushroom risotto tonight. Last night was so lovely, like me and Jules just sat down on the sand watching the sunset. It was one of the most beautiful camps I've had so far on this trip. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, and then last night I fell asleep really, really quickly actually, but unfortunately around 12 o'clock I woke up. This thing, because it's so lightweight the material's quite arched in areas which means the breeze just gets up under so i was really hidden in my bag and was kind of quite cold and shivering from about 12 till 2 in the morning um when the winds died down and i was able to get back to sleep but the winds weren't even that much they were maybe 10 12 miles per hour so um today this morning i did write a little message to the company i bought this nemo tent from explaining the situation with the bathtub um explaining the situation where she fell down in the wind and i'll just see if they will do an exchange or a refund but yeah i'm keeping my fingers crossed for that because unfortunately as much as i'm getting attached to this girl i think she's definitely not a three season tent for the uk which is incredibly sad
and here we go no trace has been left absolutely a beautiful pitch look at that look at what we were waking up to we were so lucky were we Jules so lucky so lucky and it's 17 and a half miles to the end <laughs> Side note, make sure if you're walking, you follow the walking path of this, not the cycleway. We've made a couple boo-boos doing this accidentally on this route. Today has just been blooming beautiful, absolutely stunning. Um, the first two miles went through North Berwick, which is actually the next start of trail number four, which will be the fourth to Farn Way. Trail number four, trail number five. Oh my gosh, I'll be on trail number five. So the next one is the Fourth Farn Way and that goes through North Berwick. And I went and stopped by a co-op because you know your girl loves a co-op. So I've got some coconut water to rehydrate. It looks like we should be done by half five, which oh, I'm so excited for. So excited for a rest. Hi. <laughs> Little side fact, I used to live on a llama farm in a caravan. Huh, there you go. Oh my god, you're so cute. <laughs> my feet hate tarmac. I'm lying on a back country road because I didn't want to lie in the middle of a street in a town, but where are they? Got them raised on the backpack. <sighs> Five miles left. I got this. <laughs> got this. Now those are some epic ruins. Alrighty, I'm about one mile outside of Dunbar now and look at this view. Oh, I've just been sat here for like half an hour eating snacks, resting my feet. I can't believe I'm about to finish trail four. And my next trail, the fourth to farm way, I'm gonna hit mile 500. That's mad, isn't it? That's a lot of miles. <laughs> I'm loving it, I'm loving it. Oh, and the weather, I just, I've been so lucky. I've been so lucky. I also got mango in my teeth, sorry. <laughs> now that there looks like an absolutely beautiful if not freaking terrifying wild camp pitch if the winds got up. Go on, who would pitch there? Which of you nutters would risk it if the weather said less than 10 miles per hour? And here it is, the end of the John Muir Way, which is actually John Muir's birthplace. And they've now turned it into a museum. I'm in the middle of Dunbar at the moment, so I am gonna take a couple rest days. Before I head on to trail, number five which is going to be the fourth and far and away thank you so much for following along on this journey please do hit that little like button subscribe and ding that notification button to see the next trail the fourth to far and away bye